the end of the central line at West Ryslip. The terminus and the beginnings of new things. This is High Road Ickenham in the London Borough of Hillingdon. So just off the high road, the footpath, and the invitation to adventure. Couldn't decide what I wanted to do today. I was going to continue the London Loop, and that initially, that's what led me out here, really, initially looking at the map. But then I thought, you know what? I haven't travelled to the end of the tube line and walked on from there just drifting and seeing where I end up, and that's what I'm going to do today. I have done a walk at the west, west Rice Slip about five years ago, and it was great. So I'd be interested to see where we end up today. I'm really looking forward to it. It's just nice, sometimes it's just nice to keep walking out of London. Although, one option is to follow the river round and go up or go down. Who knows? Who knows? It's a magical mystery tour. Look at this little country path. West London. <laughs> this is West London, how delightful. Cricket match going on just over there. It's been such a long, hot summer so far. Temperatures in the high 20s and early 30s most days, but weeks and weeks now. So lovely to see some actual green grass here. <laughs> Everywhere else it's parched and scorched. You can see on the post here you've got lots of planning notices for uh, HS2, which is going to come through here. I saw some uh, Signs back near the station saying save West Ryslip. This is another area of threat. And I think this here is the River Pin, which is a really delightful little river. I'd like to walk it one day actually. I think here the river is used to form part of a medieval moat. It's called Pinchester Moat. And it's a moat which I think uh, dates back to around the 13th, 14th century. And so I guess somewhere over there, in that clump of trees, there was a, a moated manor house, a fortified manor house. Amazing what we have just lying around in the suburbs. Here we have a, a medieval moat just near the backs of these houses. All these layers of history that are just here. I do love walking beneath the railway viaduct. It's a magical moment. This is Breakspear Lane. Look, the road is closed. I guess this must be for the HS2 works, but I need the footpath, which is just down here on the right. Yep, I can still access my footpath, which is down here towards Brackenbury House. I'm about to come past some angry dogs defending their garden. But look, what you get as a reward. How beautiful is this? This really does feel like the edge of London, doesn't it? Where it bleeds into the countryside. I think this kind of terrain that you get where you get the backs of houses, the edge of suburbia, the edge of London, the edge of the town or the city, where you get rivers and streams and little parks and patches of woodland and, and the hills just there in the distance. I think that is one of my favorite places for walking. There are times for all sorts of walks really, aren't there? 
And today, this is exactly what I wanted. A bit of a mixture, a bit of everything today. Obviously, I don't know where we'll end up. Oh no, it's a golf course. Nightmare. Very difficult to navigate golf courses, as you'll know from previous videos. Inevitable when walking around the edge of London to have to cross at least one. I think I've successfully navigated it across the golf course. And now look at this path, this looks amazing. Lots of signs of water. We're going to a very water environment now. These are private fishing lakes here that we're going to pass through. How beautiful. I was actually going to do this section of the London Loop today and it seemed that it was largely along the towpath that made me think, mm, you know what, I fancy doing something a bit different. But it's nice to see it there. So now we're going to cross over the Grand Union Canal. Here we are on the beautiful Grand Union Canal and you can follow that all the way down. I think that's the way the London Loop goes, is down there and all the way around down to Hayes and Harlington. Can follow it a long way north and I am tempted to do that actually. It's a little bit of a decision point here because I don't have any firm plans so I will um, walk along the towpath a bit longer I just don't want to leave the water and I've seen it up here further north so I've come on to the Grand Union and I've turned north and um, opens out to lakes and stuff it looks really appealing and I can still actually turn off uh, into Denham further along and pick up the South Bucks Way if I want to do that just carry on along the canal. It's such a beautiful day. How can I resist this? Impossible. And I've also seen there's a, a pub on the towpath a bit further north as well. That was an influencing factor, I have to admit. I love the pattern the water makes on the other side of the bridge. Isn't that beautiful? Shimmering pattern there. Got a bit of a marina going on here, just as we come out to Denham. I do sometimes fantasise about the idea of living on a boat. Well, funny feeling it's one of those things which is, uh, the idea of it is far more appealing than the actual reality of it. possible to walk past this pub here on the towpath called the Bear on the Barge. That's not its original name, I bet. Bit of road walking now. Not very far, but a little bit, just to get down into Denham. And then I think we'll uh, turn towards the Denham Aerodrome, which will be exciting. This long road here is definitely the point where you feel like you're walking out of London. Really, really beautiful little river here. I think this is the River Colne. So here we are entering Denham now. Look at that twinned with Denham Shark Bay in Western Australia. And I think officially now we've left London, although if you can see over there, probably we'll make it out, but look, there's a London transport there. There's a London transport sign on the bus stop. My feeling is that we're probably now in Buckinghamshire. Yep. There we go. South Bucks District Council. So we've just passed out of London. This is here. You're looking at the very western edge of London. Alright, this is the way I'm going. Towards North Moor Hill Wood. Which is down there. So this lane here is, looks like it's under threat from HS2. This has been a real HS2 themed walk, hasn't it? And up here, South Bucks Way. This is what I'm thinking, 
tentatively following now uh, uh, it's in the direction of Amersham. If I can make it there, it's hot and I feel tired. Across the road, look, we have Denham Aerodrome, which I believe is still very much in use. I think it's uh, you know it's a private airfield. And I'm now going to go down this lane here. Oh, you can see, look, it really is an airfield. There's the light ar aircraft there out on the actual field. You can see one over there that's taxiing. So according to Wikipedia, it's been used as a, an airfield out here since the time of the First World War. I think they did training for pilots out here in 1915. It's great, isn't it? And it was also a training centre during the Second World War. These little airfields and aerodromes are a real feature of the uh, outskirts of London. Remember when I walk out sort of on the uh, Essex side, beyond Thaden Boys, you've got all the airfields there. North Weald, Stapleford Aerodrome, there's a few others as well, isn't there? There's the one out near uh, Sawbridgeworth still, I think. And then going round, there was one near Elstree, there's an aerodrome at Elstree, isn't there? And here we have Denham, then you have one out at uh, uh, High Wycombe, Booker Airfield there. Sort of all around the edge of London, these little airfields. country lane isn't it? Imagine driving down here at night. I used to drive around lanes like this with my old man when I was a kid sometimes in the in the winter with the radio on listening to John Peel. Fantastic. Sometimes it's good to not know how far you've got to walk. Just to walk. One of the best things about, about doing a lot of walking fairly regularly is when you get into this stage of a walk it's about half four now so we're going about three and a half hours. It's moving into, you know, late afternoon, going into early evening. And what happens? You get this kind of sudden flood of memory of previous walks of other places that you've been. And it's a really beautiful experience. It can become quite overwhelming, actually, but it's a really lovely thing. Kind of getting that now. All these other places suddenly just sort of flood through you. This is stunning. Looking north here, I guess up towards sort of Chorley Wood Way. Really beautiful. I'm actually walking in that direction. The path goes there and it bends round. I think Amersham is somewhere over there, well beyond. Continuing on the South Bucks Way. tells me this path is called Old Shire Lane. This does carry on all the way up to Chorley Wood. This is another view of that great expanse of land there. I think we can see the M25, those cars moving around like little ants on the horizon. So the path descends in quite a steep hollow down here. I can hear the call of pheasant. Well, wow, that's fairly hardcore, isn't it? Know your enemy, danger. Mobile plant operates in this area. Strong language. All right, now you can start to see the hills opening up over there. The edge of the Chilterns, look, you see. There, stretching all the way through, all the way across. That's probably where we're gonna end up. There is a little bit of doubt in my mind. I could still turn off towards Beaconsfield, but who knows. I'm starting to fear that that beautiful vista up there that I was looking across is actually going to be built over for HS2, High Speed 2. Because there's a lot of building work going on around here and that might explain the kind of slightly rough nature of that field. In fact, it's not cultivated. Look, you've got all this signage here. Looks like it might jump across the path and gobble up that beautiful view. And all of this looks like it's part of HS2 as well, including the rest of Old Shire Lane, which is now closed. The South Bucks Way. Continue.
13 years and long here. So we're going to pass under the M25 through this long tunnel here. Tour at Chalfant Lodge is appealing on one level. And I could carry on my walk that way and head in the direction of Beaconsfield, but I think I'm going to keep to the South Bucks Way at least for a little bit longer. It's half past five. It's been really hot today, it's quite draining. The more I look at the map, the more I sort of doubt my ability to get to uh, Amersham. That was Gerald's Cross Golf Club. Navigated safely, well done, pat on the back. Coming now into the edge of Chalmers St Giles. I think I need to sit down here. Sit down and regroup. So this is the path to Chapman St Peter. It's so beautiful. I know I've said that quite a few times today, but it's been true in every occasion. It's a wonderful path to navigate. Look at this. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. Charm for St. Peter, quite sort of quaint and elegant. Need to have a sit down. Sitting on this bench, munching on my chips, drinking my Fanta. After considerable amount of deliberation, I just don't feel like I've got it in me to get to Amersham. It just feels like a long way to go. I mean, on paper, it's what, six miles, six and a half miles. I've walked 13 and a half. I just feel a bit drained, whereas I can walk about um, two miles, two and a half miles to Sear Green, and then I can walk along the A40 into Beaconsfield if I like, which feels doable, whereas, oh, and yeah, sometimes you've got to just go with how you feel, right? So up here to Gold Hill Common, which is lovely. It's a beautiful old church, isn't it? We're now in the land of religious nonconformism. Martyrs and heretics. Partly relying on a fab ice lolly to carry me on the rest of the way. This is Gold Hill Common. It's really, really lovely. Came over here about four or five years ago, but probably about the same time of day actually. On a walk that ended out, I think, at uh, Gerald's Cross or Beaconsfield. This is beautiful, isn't it? I do love it up here. It's a really magical spot. So we've had the uh, South Bucks Trail, now we've got the Chiltern Heritage Trail. Should be interesting. It's funny, whenever I go through a wood now, no matter where I am, I tend to kind of get a pang to be in Epping Forest. We're in the Lee Valley, in the woods around the Lee Valley. Wow, this cool woodland is a real relief after a long hot day. It's quarter past seven. It gets dark in about two hours. This is Great Legs Wood. Coming up to Jordan's of the famous Quaker Meeting House where they and the journey of the Pilgrim Fathers to the United States. Can you hear that? I doubt it's going to be audible. But those power lines are really crackling. And this is what you want in the early evening, summer's day. Lovely meadow of tall swaying grass. This 
is the way ahead. You can hear the whooshing of the Chiltern Line trains. And here's the train line again. Runs between Birmingham and Marylebone. And I'll be on that at some point this evening. This is the path that runs parallel to the railway line. I'm going to see if I can make it to Sear Green in time to get the 8.06 train. It is now 7.42. I think I can do it. Unless my map reading really badly lets me down. So here we go. We're going through this wood and then along a lane. I think that's it. I'd say I am going to make it to the station on time, see a green and Jordans. So that'll be the end of the walk. Thank you so much for coming out with me again today. What an amazing walk. Really memorable summer walk. I mean, it hasn't finished, I'm always saying it's memorable. But um, it's been fantastic and your company is always, you know, the best thing about it. So I'll see you on the next one. No idea where it'll be as usual. But uh, it'll be a cracker no matter where we go, eh? You would never think this was a train station, would you? Look at it. It's more like the clubhouse of the junior section at the golf club.